Hello again everyone, my name is Annie with the Pikes Peak Library District and we are here today to talk about the combat classes. The class you choose to play in D&D is going to be a key facet not just of what you can do in and out of combat, but how you will choose to roleplay your character. A class is a defining feature of your character and something you will want to do some solid research into before deciding. In today's video, I will be doing a brief overview of each combat class so you can get a better idea of what exactly you'll be doing. Now, just because a class is primarily melee focused doesn't mean they have no ability to cast spells or create spell-like effects. More that these particular classes just focus more heavily on weapon combat versus spell combat. That being said, let's start with our first class, the Barbarian. The Barbarian class is a primarily melee combat focused class, but the defining feature of any Barbarian is their rage. An unbridled, unquenchable, and unthinking fury. More than a mere emotion, their anger is the ferocity of a cornered predator, the unrelenting assault of a storm, the churning turmoil of the sea. A Barbarian can draw on this reservoir of fury only a few times without resting, but those few rages are usually sufficient to defeat whatever threats arise. For some, their rage springs from a communion with fierce animal spirits. Others draw from a roiling reservoir of anger at a world full of pain. For every barbarian, rage is a power that fuels not just a battle frenzy, but also uncanny reflexes, resilience, and feats of strength. To a barbarian, civilization is no virtue, but a sign of weakness. The strong embrace of their animal nature, keen instincts, primal physicality, and ferocious rage makes them uncomfortable when hedged in by walls and crowds. They thrive in the wilds of their homelands, the tundra, jungle, or grasslands where their tribes live and hunt. When creating a barbarian character, think about where your character comes from and his or her place in the world. Talk with your DM about an appropriate origin for your barbarian. Did you come from a distant land, making you a stranger in the area of the campaign? Or is the campaign set in a rough and tumble frontier where barbarians are common? What led you to take up the adventuring life? Were you lured to settled lands by the promise of riches? Did you join forces with soldiers of those lands to face a shared threat? Did monsters or an invading horde drive you out of your homeland, making you a rootless refugee? Perhaps you were a prisoner of war, brought in chains to civilized lands and only now able to win your freedom. Or you might have been cast out from your people because of a crime you committed, a taboo you violated, or a coup that removed you from a position of authority. You can make a barbarian quickly by following these suggestions. First, put your highest ability score in strength, followed by constitution. Second, Choose the Outlander background. Moving on, we have one of the most classic of classes in D&D, the Fighter. Fighters are perhaps the most diverse class of characters in the worlds of Dungeons & Dragons. Questing knights, conquering overlords, royal champions, elite foot soldiers, hardened mercenaries, and bandit kings. As fighters, they all share an unparalleled mastery with weapons and armor and a thorough knowledge of the skills of combat. And they are well acquainted with death, both meeting it out and staring it defiantly in the face. Fighters learn the basics of all combat styles. Every fighter can swing an axe, fence with a rapier, wield a longsword or a greatsword, use a bow, and even trap foes in a net with some degree of skill. Likewise, a fighter is adept with shields and every form of armor. Beyond that basic degree of familiarity, each fighter specializes in a certain style of combat. Some concentrate on archery, some on fighting two weapons at once, and some on augmenting their martial skills with magic. This combination of broad general ability and extensive specialization makes fighters superior combatants on battlefields and in dungeons alike. As you build your fighter, think about two related elements of your character's background. Where did you get your combat training? And what set you apart from the mundane warriors around you? Were you particularly ruthless? Did you get extra help from a mentor, perhaps because of your exceptional dedication? What drove you to this training in the first place? 
a threat to your homeland, a thirst for revenge, or a need to prove yourself might all have been factors. You might have enjoyed formal training in a noble's army or in a local militia. Perhaps you trained in a war academy, learning strategy, tactics, and military history. Or you might be self-taught, unpolished but well-tested. Did you take up the sword as a way to escape the limits of life on a farm, or are you following a proud family tradition? Where did you acquire your weapons and armor? They might have been military issue, or family heirlooms, or perhaps you've scrimped and saved for years to buy them. Your armaments are now among your most important possessions. They are the only things that stand between you and death's embrace. You can make a fighter quickly by following these suggestions. First, make strength or dexterity your highest ability score, depending on whether you want to focus on melee weapons or on archery and finesse weapons such as rapiers. Your next highest score should be constitution or intelligence if you plan to adopt the Eldritch Knight Martial Archetype. Second, choose the soldier background. Now here we have a new term, the archetype. Archetypes are essentially subclasses of the larger class trees. As mentioned previously, one of the fighter archetypes or subclasses is the Eldritch Knight who can spell cast and use a weapon. I don't have time in this video to go into great detail on each class and their archetypes, but I will definitely be planning on doing a deep dive video on each class, which will cover archetypes, so stay tuned. Moving along, next we have the Monk. Another classic combined combat and magic class, monks are united in their ability to magically harness the energy that flows in their bodies. Whether channeled as a striking display of combat prowess or a subtler focus of defensive ability and speed, this energy infuses all that a monk does. Monks make careful study of a magical energy that most monastic traditions call Ki. This energy is an element of the magic that suffuses the multiverse, specifically the element that flows through living bodies. Monks harness this power within themselves to create magical effects and exceed their body's physical capabilities, and some of their special attacks can hinder the flow of ki in their opponents. Using this energy, monks channel uncanny speed and strength into their unarmed strikes. As they gain experience, their martial training and their mastery of ki gives them more power over their bodies and the bodies of their foes. The majority of monks, whether in cloisters or in hermitage, don't shun their neighbors, making frequent visits to nearby towns or villages and exchanging their service for food and other goods. As versatile warriors, monks often end up protecting their neighbors from monsters or tyrants. For a monk, becoming an adventurer means leaving a structured communal lifestyle to become a wanderer. This can be a harsh transition and monks do not undertake it lightly. Those who leave their cloisters take their work seriously approaching their adventures as personal tests of their physical and spiritual growth. As a rule, monks care little for material wealth and are driven by a desire to accomplish a greater mission than merely slaying monsters and plundering their treasure. As you make your monk character, think about your connection to the monastery where you learned your skills and spent your formative years. Were you an orphan or a child left on the monastery's threshold? Did your parents promise you to the monastery in gratitude for a service performed by those monks? Did you enter this secluded life to hide from a crime you committed? Or did you choose the monastic life for yourself? Consider why you left. Did the head of your monastery choose you for a particularly important mission beyond the cloister? Perhaps you were cast out because of some violation of the community's rules. Did you dread leaving? Or were you happy to go? Is there something you hope to accomplish outside the monastery? Are you eager to return to your home? As a result of the structured life of a monastic community and the discipline required to harness key, monks are almost always lawful in alignment. You can make a monk quickly by following these suggestions. First, make dexterity your highest ability score, followed by wisdom. Second, choose the hermit background. Now, 
we have paladins. Whatever their origin and their mission, paladins are united by their oaths to stand against the forces of evil. It is a source of power that turns a devout warrior into a blessed champion. A paladin swears to uphold justice and righteousness, to stand with the good things of the world against the encroaching darkness, and to hunt the forces of evil wherever they lurk. Different paladins focus on various aspects of the cause of righteousness, but all are bound by the oaths that grant them power to do their sacred work. Paladins train for years to learn the skills of combat, mastering a variety of weapons and armor. Even so, their martial skills are secondary to the magical power they wield. Power to heal the sick and injured, to smite the wicked and the undead, and to protect the innocent and those who join them in the fight for justice. The most important aspect of a paladin character is the nature of his or her holy quest. Although the class features related to your oath don't appear until you reach third level, plan ahead for that choice by reading the oath descriptions at the end of the class description. Are you a devoted servant of good, loyal to the gods of justice and honor, a holy knight in shining armor venturing forth to smite evil? Are you a glorious champion of the light, cherishing everything beautiful that stands against the shadow, a knight whose oath descends from traditions older than many of the gods? Or are you an embittered loner, sworn to take vengeance on those who have done great evil, sent as an angel of death by the gods, or driven by your need for revenge? The gods of the multiverse section will be useful for you here. How did you experience your call to serve as a paladin? Did you hear a whisper from an unseen god or angel while you were at prayer? Did another paladin sense the potential within you and decide to train you as a squire? Or did some terrible event, the destruction of your home perhaps, drive you to your quests? There are many ways to hear the paladin's call. As guardians against the forces of wickedness, paladins are rarely of any evil alignment. Most of them walk the paths of charity and justice. Consider how your alignment colors the way you pursue your holy quest and the manner in which you conduct yourself before gods and mortals. Your oath and alignment might be in harmony, or your oath might represent standards of behavior that you have not yet attained. You can make a paladin quickly by following these suggestions. First, strength should be your highest ability score, followed by charisma. Second, choose the noble background. Rangers are the next class and are also fantastically varied depending on how they are played. Far from the bustle of cities and towns, past the hedges that shelter the most distant farms from the terror of the wild, amid the dense packed trees of trackless forests and across wide and empty plains, rangers keep their unending watch. Warriors of the wilderness, rangers specialize in hunting the monsters that threaten the edges of civilization. Humanoid raiders, rampaging beasts and monstrosities, terrible giants and deadly dragons. They learn to track their quarry as a predator does, moving stealthily through the wilds and hiding themselves in brush and rubble. Rangers focus their combat training on techniques that are particularly useful against their specific favored foes. Thanks to their familiarity with the wilds, rangers acquire the ability to cast spells that harness nature's power, much as a druid does. Their spells, like their combat abilities, emphasize speed, stealth, and the hunt. A ranger's talents and abilities are honed with deadly focus on the grim task of protecting the borderlands. Though a ranger might make a living as a hunter, a guide, or a tracker, a ranger's true calling is to defend the outskirts of civilization from the ravages of monsters and humanoid hordes that press in from the wild. In some places, rangers gather in secretive orders or join forces with druidic circles. Many rangers, though, are independent almost to a fault. Knowing that when a dragon or a band of orcs attacks, a ranger might be the first, and possibly the last, line of defense. As you create your ranger character, consider the nature of the training that gave you your particular capabilities. Did you train with a single mentor, wandering the wilds together until you mastered the ranger's ways? Did you leave your apprenticeship, or was your mentor slain, perhaps by the same kind of monster that became your favorite enemy? 
Or perhaps you learned your skills as part of a band of rangers affiliated with a druidic circle, trained in mystic paths as well as wilderness lore. You might be self-taught, a recluse who learned combat skills, tracking, and even a magical connection to nature through the necessity of surviving in the wilds. What's the source of your particular hatred of a certain kind of enemy? Did a monster kill someone you loved or destroy your home village? Did you see too much of the destruction these monsters cause and commit yourself to reining in their depredations? Is your adventuring career a continuation of your work in protecting the borderlands or a significant change? What made you join up with a band of adventurers? Do you find it challenging to teach new allies the ways of the wild? Or do you welcome the relief from solitude that they offer? You can make a ranger quickly by following these suggestions. First, make dexterity your highest ability score, followed by wisdom. Some rangers who focus on two-weapon fighting make strength higher than dexterity. Second, choose the outlander background. And finally, we have rogues. Rogues are another classic staple of D&D. They rely on skill, stealth, and their foes' vulnerabilities to get the upper hand in any situation. They have a knack for finding the solution to just about any problem, demonstrating a resourcefulness and versatility that is the cornerstone of any successful adventuring party. Rogues devote as much effort to mastering the use of a variety of skills as they do to perfecting their combat abilities, giving them a broad expertise that few other characters can match. Many rogues focus on stealth and deception, while others refine the skills that help them in a dungeon environment, such as climbing, finding and disarming traps, and opening locks. When it comes to combat, rogues prioritize cunning over brute strength. A rogue would rather make one precise strike, placing it exactly where the attack will hurt the target most, than wear an opponent down with a barrage of attacks. Rogues have an almost supernatural knack for avoiding danger, and a few learn magical tricks to supplement their other abilities. Every town and city has its share of rogues. Most of them live up to the worst stereotypes of the class, making a living as burglars, assassins, cut purses, and con artists. Often these scoundrels are organized into thieves' guilds or crime families. Plenty of rogues operate independently, but even they sometimes recruit apprentices to help them in their scams and heists. A few rogues do make an honest living as locksmiths, investigators, or exterminators, which can be a pretty dangerous job in a world where dire rats and were rats haunt the sewers. As you create your rogue character, consider the character's relationship to the law. Do you have a criminal past or present? Are you on the run from the law or from an angry thieves guild master? Did you leave your guild in search of bigger risks and bigger rewards? Is it greed that drives you in your adventures or some other desire or ideal? What was the trigger that led you away from your previous life? Did a great con or heist gone terribly wrong cause you to reevaluate your career? Maybe you were lucky and a successful robbery gave you the coin you needed to escape the squalor of your life. Did wanderlust finally call you away from your home? Perhaps you suddenly found yourself cut off from your family or your mentor and you had to find a new means of support. Maybe you made a new friend, another member of the adventuring party, who showed you new possibilities for earning a living and employing your particular talents. You can make a rogue quickly by following these suggestions. First, dexterity should be your highest ability score. Make intelligence your next highest if you want to excel at investigation or plan to take up the arcane trickster archetype. Choose charisma instead if you plan to emphasize deception and social interaction. Second, choose the charlatan background. There we have it, half of all the base classes in D&D. Thank you for joining me today in our overview of the combat classes. And join me next time to see a general overview of the magic classes. As always, I am Annie with the Pikes Peak Library District, and I will see you next time on D&D Basics.